Okay, I appreciate I'm, by online standards, probably 24 hours too late, so I'm going to keep this one really short. Uh, what the hell did I just watch? <sighs> Do you know what? It's so nice when a series that you're anticipating, or a show, a game, a movie, anything, when you've got peak level anticipation for this long, and then it comes along and delivers, and then just kind of elevates itself at the last minute, Life's good, man. Now, it's so good to see House of the Dragon back. It was one of my favorite shows the year that it came out. It might have been my favorite show, actually. And do you know what? This one, that about halfway through it, I was thinking, hmm, this kind of feels quite slow. Now, <laughs> usually in the world of Westeros, that means warning, because we're about to dial this bitch up and... Surely enough, that happened here. <laughs> I won't go into spoilers until the end, so don't worry if you, for some miraculous reason, haven't seen it and haven't had the internet ruin it for you. But yeah, man, it's just, it, it felt like, do we really need to be focusing on this? Because obviously the way the end of season one transpired with Renera you losing one of her sons, this very much picked up with her in full mourning, and the mourning did take its time and how her mourning slowed everything down you know the the narrative i mean purposefully and how that mourning affected the advancement of the other characters in the sense that they couldn't advance because they're all subservient to queen renera so without her accord they can't advance their storyline so it, it, it almost felt like it was bottlenecking a little bit um and then you realize obviously, because it's goated TV, that it was doing it with a purpose. And Jesus Christ on a bike was that purpose made evident. Because all it builds up to, we're going to get a little bit into spoiler, ter well, not a little bit, we're going to get into spoiler territory here. Um, if you don't want to listen to this part, I'll just end on this and say, this episode is freaking sensational and it's great to see House of the Dragon back and you should absolutely go, absolutely go and watch this and absolutely be plugged in for the next episode which has next week that's beyond a shadow of a doubt spoiler side going into some detail on the narrative here because after this after said bottlenecking and i look to my wife at this point renera returns to dragonstone and says i want aemond targaryen the one who is responsible for killing her son at the end of season one and i said that's a mistake because what she's done there is she's given them an order, but she's given them she's given her council and her soldiers and her close allies an order without boundary and without direction. It's too vague. You've given them too much of a carte blanche to go and do some stuff. And surely enough, who else would it be than good old Matt Smith himself? God, he's such a cool character and this isn't he, Damon. Damon just kicks ass, man. Makes his little way to King's Landing, bribes a rat catcher, throw back to Viserys and the rat from season one. Bit of foreshadowing going on there, so again, goated writing going on here. Hires a rat catcher and a soldier to go and get Aemon's head. They misinterpret that as just being a prince's head. And they... I, I still... I. I Listen, my wife turned to me at this point uh, when what I'm about to describe to you happened and went, I'm not watching this series anymore. This is officially too much for me. And I'm still like <laughs> shivering a bit after what I saw because for those of you who don't know, I've actually just welcomed my second child into the world. My son's just been born. So what I'm about to describe because of where I'm at, this hit me hard. So these two people sneak into, uh, they sneak into the young prince and princess's room and they behead the child they behead the child <laughs> what the hell now of course in brilliant in brilliant hbo fashion this one ends with the other queen whose name i can't freaking remember right now because i'm still in shock the other queen finding out that one of her little ones is dead and ending with a close-up of shock on her and season two episode one ends exactly the way that season one ended 
it's gonna go down. <laughs> Things are about to get really real. I am trembling at what I just got put through. This wasn't quite as bad as the Viper in the Mountain from Game of Thrones. Like that still top tier grossed me out stuff. But this was messed up, man. The fact that they went this deep. <laughs> Not cool. Not cool. Oh, God. I'm still in shock. And as a result, I just can't wait to see what they pull out of the bag next week. I love this. Long may House of the Dragon reign. Long may we be in the shadow of the dragon. This is such goated TV. It's, it's some of the best stuff I've seen this year, man, on TV or big screen. It's so goddamn good, and I'm happy that it's back. Um, Yeah, I want to know what you guys thought. And be nice. If you've read the books, don't be douchebags and put spoilers in the comments section i've probably given some of the bigger douchebags out there ideas by saying that but don't 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 be dicks um but yeah i just let me know what you thought did this mess you up as much as it messed me up because poor it wasn't pleasant man but by by, by proxy it was still freaking awesome um yeah i can't wait for next week subscribe button down there another video up there stay tuned to the channel by hitting the notification bell and obviously making sure you're subscribed because i'm going to be doing <sighs> episode four of the acolyte tomorrow major drop in quality compared to this but we do what we do i'm nico Lero from the silver screen dudes and i'll catch you guys tomorrow for star wars thank you for watching i'll see you soon